the family want to give it up. They're sure to let them welcome right now. So if you like to get up and fellowship with somebody, take a selfie and let them know what's going on in New Bethel. We're going to give y'all a new card to let them welcome right now. Come on now. Volunteers needed, Nehemiah Ministry Club, 
Leo Ma Bay Security Ministry contact Deacon James Augustus. Children Youth Ministry contact Deacon Tyrone Smith. Food Pantry contact Deacon Roland Amos. Kingdom Builders Ministry contact Sister Javella Carter, Sister Shawnee Hood. To report any members who are sick or in the hospital, or to report any deaths, you may call the church office or get a prayer request card from an usher. Prayer line available every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 a.m. and Sunday at 6 a.m. Don't forget to include your prayers. Our members, relatives, friends, those in bereavement, our service men and women in our churches and our country. For God's true body to receive for the Spirit, a former American president said, I have been driven by many times. I have been driven by many times my knees by the overwhelming conviction that had me nowhere else to go. Joshua 24, 24, 15 says, Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. For for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Y'all have a good day. But he requires you to speak. 
that the devil is cast out of our homes. I thank you that the devil is cast out of our schools. I thank you that God now society is recognizing you as God. I thank you that the church is the church. We are preaching the unadulterated gospel. I thank you that God you're causing all grace to abound towards us. And that we have all sufficiency in all things and we want nothing. I thank you. I speak that over our folks today. I speak that over those online. I give you glory and I give you praise. Father, we thank you that God, you are hopping behind the cross and makes preaching easy. It makes listening a sweet delight. Anoint their ears as you anoint my mouth. And preach your word. Bind the witch. We bind the warlock that tries to pray against this word. We thank you that you hide us in the secret place of the Most High God. We shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We give the Lord praise. We give the Lord glory for it. You are God and besides you, there is no other. Let's clap our hands and give you glory. Lord, I said, let's clap our hands and give you glory. Tell somebody you got to speak it. Come on, tell them. Come on, tell them you got to speak it. And you got to say it until you see it. Yeah, that's how it happens. If you're happy to be here, why don't you just wave your hand and say, I'm glad to be in the house today.
uh, through muddy water on a cloudy day. That man can see the word of God, and I want you to be a part of this one night revival tonight at 6.30. If you'll come out, support, we'll be singing, we'll get the preacher right up, amen, he'll be able to go forward. Be expecting, tell somebody, expect a blessing. Yeah. And you got to come to church like looking that he's going to do it for you. Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. Well, right, Pastor, you know, I don't believe in the prophecy, that's fine, he's going to be preaching. So if you don't believe in prophecy, that's fine. Get the word. Amen. But then the Lord may speak through him to you. Amen. Amen. And so he is not a psychic. He is not a fortune teller. This is a man of God that hears from God. And I will just bring anybody and everybody in here. So I thank God for this man of God, a friend. I call him friend and brother. So tonight uh, at 6.30, one night revival tonight, please come out. Amen. All right. Look at verse number six. We have work to do of our own this morning. Now, now know that I, that the Lord saveth is anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. And so stop trying to add, we will trust in the name of the Lord there. It says we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I've done it to you. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright, saying, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, neighbor. It, is it is a blessed assurance. Blessed. Come on, tell somebody else, it is, it is, it is, it is. a blessed assurance. Give the Lord praise as you sit down in your seat today. We give God honor. Listen, this song, this is the last installment of my series that I've been teaching on, of the songs of the summer. Every year, for the last three years, I do a teaching in the month of June about the book of Psalms, and I implore you, I encourage you, I challenge you last week not to become so familiar with the song that you lose the power behind the song. I don't want you to know where I'm going and you can, you know, know my mannerisms and you know how the sermon's flowing and you lose the power that is in us going by Calvary and me asking you, won't he do it, have you tried it? I don't want you to lose the value and the power because you hear it all every week. Because what I happen is that if you become people that are uh, pre presupposed that you already know what's going to happen, then you won't listen for what could happen. You, you'll miss that God may prophetically say something to you different in the same word. In other words, I've read the woman at the well for 20 plus years. Every time I read it here lately, God has shown me something different. That's because when I go to the text, I don't go to the text and can we celebrate these three men getting baptized today? That that we that we miss the power behind it. That God that God has God's word is pregnant to us, although it's already been settled. Say it again. See, it's settled as a result as it relates to Him. He's not saying anything out different outside of the canon. The canon is closed. There's no new books added. There were no books that were missed. This is the word of God. This is not Shakespearean uh, dialect. This is not a good book. No, these are the very words of God. And God says in his word that it's pregnant to you, but it's self for me. In other words, every time you read his word and you go to his word with expectation, God can show and reveal something for you that can make you live better today than you did yesterday. The problem is when we go to the text or when we open a scripture that we've heard all our life, we become very religious. We become very churchy. And we say, well, we know what he's going to preach. We know how it's going to end. So we immediately get on our phone. We start texting. We start IGing. We start taking selfies in the middle of service because we feel like we already know what God is going to say to us. But can I submit to you early in the sermon, my brothers and sisters, that if you would take a good look at yourself and say, God, I'm coming here expecting you to reveal truth to me to get me right. Yeah, I didn't say you don't know the Bible. I never condemned you that you didn't know your scriptures. Matter of fact, this is Sunday school. 
old church. I know you read your Bible, but can we all do a clear vote that sometimes, oftentimes, we've read scriptures, we've heard scriptures, yeah. we've seen them, and now we sit back and say, I know that scripture. But do you really know what God is saying now? Yeah, I know what he said when you first heard it, but do you know what he's saying now? Because his word is pregnant to you. It's forever revealing truth. It's forever revealing how to change your life. It's settled in him, but it's pregnant to you because you know why? God is the word. Say it again for some of y'all that missed it. He is the word. He is outside of time. You are in time. So whatever God said before you was born, you don't re understand it until he gives it to you. Yeah. So now it's birth in you now, but it was always settled in him. Yeah. So I want you to get so comfortable in these purple chairs that you miss God tugging on your heart. Yeah. Can I help you, Pastor Norris? It's not your problem. I'm not your issue. Your issue really is the fact that the word that is being preached is tapping on that part of your heart that you've been trying to hide. One of my favorite boxes, one of my favorite boxes ever to live is Floyd Money Mayweather. I like Floyd because not only is he undefeated, he lets you know he's undefeated. He gonna remind you of how much he's undefeated. He was fighting this guy named Oturo Gotti early in his career. This is back in the 90s. He was fighting, and he was manhandling Oturo Gotti. I mean, destroying this guy in boxing. I know some of y'all think boxing is vicious and all that. I watch it. I really like it. I pay for people. Y'all pray for me later on. <laughs> so he's, he's whooping Oturo. I mean, destroying this guy. And you can see that Oturo Gotti is favoring his left eye. So he's not letting Floyd keep tagging that eye with the jab. Every time Floyd gets in, he tags him with that jab. And so Arturo, on the fourth, fourth round, he starts favoring it because he knows that Floyd has found a part of him. Come on. That's hitting me. And that's why people get issues with me. Because I found a part that really tried. Judges are seeing that I'm tagging that eye. I'm tagging that pride. Y'all ain't saying that. I'm tagging. I'm tagging it off. I'm playing my music. But y'all get the point. And the problem is that they have a problem with pastor, but the problem ain't with me. I'm just using the word to tag us off. Because what y'all don't know is that I'm tagging you out here. But in my study, he been tagging me. My hands ain't as fast as they used to be. But I can still get a little something in, y'all don't know. It, it, it's, it, it, it's not your problem. It's not with me. It, it's not that I changed this or that I changed that. The issue is that that is the issue that everybody can see. So I'm going to harp on the one that everybody can see because I'm trying to hide what I don't want people to see. So I'm mad that you changed this, but I'm really mad because you talked about my sin. I'm mad because you said this, but I'm really mad because you called me out. I'm mad. Thank you for the free class. I'm mad. The word, the word tags us all. I mean, you be walking away and the word just ran. You be like, what? Just, he stopped favoring it. And Floyd, being the scientist that he is, he knows that he's favoring it. And so Floyd says, I'm going to get him. I'm going to set him up with the jab. But then I'm going to come around with this power shot with my right hand. So Arturi fakes like he's going to hide it. But he fakes the jab, blocks the jab, and then Floyd comes over with the right. He's still getting that out. In other words, it doesn't matter.
if you leave here or if you don't listen to me, somebody on Facebook should be tagging. See, if you run from here and you run somewhere else and they let you just go, they're not preaching. It should tag us all. That's why I don't want you to get comfortable that you just hear and you never change. I don't want you just coming. I'm a member of New Bethel, but you, is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? I know you thought church membership equaled Christianity, but it doesn't. Because your name can be on this road and be absent from that road. But I want to make sure that the names coexist and that your name on this road means that you will make him Lord of your life and that means that your name is written on. Because Revelation 20 told us that when he opens the book, he's going to try to find out whose name is in there. And I don't want you to get there talking about, well, you know, I was a member of New Bethel, Pastor Norris, and, and Pastor Taylor, and Pastor Harry, and, and, and I was a member there, but, but I want to make sure my name, he was like, depart from me. No, 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 you didn't hear me. I went to New Bethel. He said, I know. I saw you every Sunday when you went. I still don't know you. Because you can show up to a function, and don't nobody know you. And they're going to check the guest list to make sure you got no, I said, I feel like this one. They're going to find out that you have clearance to be in here. I, I know him over there. What's his name? I know him over there. No, no, it's your name. So, so, so that's why I'm challenging you not to look at this text and just say, I heard this before. Number one, it's not in my notes, but it's re first revelation. That's pride. Yeah. That's pride. I tell people all the time when I'm preaching, it's not time to do Bible study. You don't need to be looking at your Bible when I'm preaching. No, you need to be writing down and then after service. In your personal time, you need to verify everything I said was accurate. Come on. That's why he talks about uh, uh, not causing confusion in the church. That's where he talked about in the Corinthian church that you shouldn't be talking in tongues while I'm preaching. Because he didn't say you couldn't talk in tongues. Thank you for the two amens. Everybody got amen on the first part, but then nothing. Okay. He didn't say you couldn't. He said there's a time. And it's not the time while I'm preaching. While I'm preaching, we need to hear the words of God. Right? That's why when I say something, you pause, you may give me an amen, you may slap your neighbor, but it's in between the pause of me saying. The problem is, is that we want to do everything on God's time and then act like our time is sacred. <laughs> what you mean, Pastor? Y'all pay bills in church? During church? Y'all text during church? It's God's time. But then when your time's off and he may say, let's pray, you're like, I ain't got time. Or you may tell him, we just got done praying. I've never heard nobody on vacation say, we just got done eating. They always eat on vacation. <laughs> Ain't there nobody say that? We just got done. Or we just got done going to the beach. Or we just got done shopping. Nobody ever says these things. But when it comes to God, I just got done going to church. Another service? Next time your kids say another service, say another video game? <laughs> Some more VC? <laughs> Next time your husband complain about going to church, say another car? Another shirt? Next time your wife get on your nerves and say, oh, another purse? Another spare shoes? You only wear two at a time. You got eight pair of black shoes. I don't know why. Eight. You got 17 bags. The me look at that. It don't matter. I like smoke. It don't matter. The text is the text. And whether you read it 20 times or the first time, it will always bless you. It will always speak to you. Y'all still here? That's my introduction. This song, then, therefore, is us moving to our July sermon series. July sermon series, and next Sunday, Minister Coleman will be back 
in town, so I'm allowing him to preach on first Sunday. He'll be able to come and we pray for that. One of his sons, one of his sons of our church, he'll be, he'll be ministering next week. And I told him I'm going to be starting a series on mountain moving faith. Mountain moving faith. I want to show you how to use your faith. I want to show you how to activate it. I want to show you what it is. I want to show you when you're not in faith. I want to show you that this song that we're reading is a transition to that series. That, that what David is doing in this song, he's setting us up to now walk in a level of faith that your money and your pension and your retirement and your income can't get you. That, that, that where you're limited in your resources, you'll have faith in God to do exceeding abundantly. It is not exceedingly abundantly. He exceeds abundantly. In other words, look at the scripture. He does exceeding abundantly. In other words, the Lee says it's continually abundantly. He exceeds whatever's abundant. So God exceeds that. I want to teach you that your resources, our resources of the church are limited. But when we take our two fishes and our five loaves and we put it in his hand, he bless it, he break it, and he multiplies it. That's the type of faith that I want us walking into. Here it is. This psalm sets us up. Here it is. That, that This is a poem. This, this psalm, like the other ones that I've read for you, they are poems. That This psalm 20 and psalms 21 are twins. They're, they're 20. They're 20 today. They're twins. That, that the Psalms 20 is the prayer before the battle. Psalms 21 is the celebration after the victory. I don't know about y'all, but when I played basketball, I had music that I came to the game to. I had music that I listened to before jump, before the ball was jumped up. And then I had music to kind of mellow me out. I had three stages of me getting ready for the game. When I was in the world, Tupac and Nas and Biggie got me up. When I got saved, I was at all course State University when I got saved and John P. Key. I didn't realize how much John P. Key could bless you before you play basketball. Some of my best games was on that strip album. Y'all remember that strip album? You know, you, y'all know some of y'all remember that strip album. That strip album got me some of my best games. I changed the soundtrack when I changed partners. Three class because some folks trying to figure out what to say. Here is it again. I change soundtracks when I change partners. Why? Tupac couldn't talk to me now that I'm born again because that's a dead man talking to a living man. Now, if you don't know me by now, I don't care about trouble or none of that stuff. Tupac was a man walking dead in trespasses and sins, according to Ephesians chapter 2. Now that I'm born again, I have, not only am I playing basketball, I am a testimony on the court. So how I handle situations, it was bigger than the game. God was using me in locker rooms, in hotels, on trips to show him that you can be 19 and 20 and still be saved while playing a Division I athletic contest. That I didn't have to succumb to what my, my teammates were doing. God can still use me at a teenager age and still be, that's why I get on young people, I don't want to hear these excuses, peer pressure, this and that. If you're going to stand 10 toes down, you need to stand 10 toes down. I don't want to hear it. Now, did I do everything right? Of course, not the man standing, but the God was already covered by his blood. And so, John P. Key used to get me round, and I would listen to John P. Key on the way to the gym. Before tip, I would have my, my, my walkman. Some of y'all remember the CD player that would skip. For your good, for your good, for your good, for your good. You got to hear it. That's before, you know, all this new technology. You be shooting the bath for your good, for your good. And, and he would get me going. And I would listen to a song before the battle. Then I would listen to a song after 
after we won or lost. David teaches Israel songs to sing before every battle, whether it be him or somebody else. That's why I told you last week that the songs are a template that you can take out their information, you can replace your situation, and it'll work because this song doesn't belong to David. Don't go to sleep. This song doesn't belong to David. It belongs to God. David is God's child. And David is the reason that we have it because God in his Holy Ghost providence used David to write the song but the song just wasn't for David or the children of Israel. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever, Israel, black, white, whoever calls on the name of the Lord. So this song doesn't exclusively belong to David. It belongs to you and I. That before you go to that job interview, before you begin to handle this situation with your family, before you go to that meeting at work about your promotion, you can read this song and say the same anointing and the same God that was on this song, God be on it now. In 2023, I need your power on this song. David begins to start us off by telling us that these poems are the word of God. And this is what he tells us about Israel. I want you to look at Israel when they go into battle. I want you to notice these things about Israel. That Israel has a three-phase process. Number one, Israel has a commander-in-chief. That commander-in-chief is God. It is God. The God is behind the scenes orchestrating the battle plan. Anything that David did, it wasn't because David was so good. It was because that God was orchestrating David. That's why this church is so blessed, not just because we got some of the best Sunday school teachers. Let's give it up for them right now. Come on. Not only because we got great deacons, not only because we got great trustees, everything, the success of this church goes back to God blessing us. They had a commander in chief. That's God. Number two, they had what we call a king, a king, a monarchy, a theocracy. God was now leading the king, and the king now was the general, but he was under the command of God. So you had God, you had the king or the, or the general, and then you had what we call the soldiers or the people. The people were the third phase because the people had to listen to the king who was listening to God in order for them to do what God told them to do. So David said, before, before we go to battle, before we throw any rocks, throw any spears, or shoot any arrows, here's what you do before you go to battle. You pray. He says, this is what you do. This is what he told them to do. He gives them what they should do in the verse, first five verses. He talks about, Lord, hear us in the day of trouble. He says, I don't know what day of trouble you may have, but I need you to be reminded about this, that God will and God shall, and you need God to hear you. He says, hear us in the day of trouble. He says, send help. Send me help from my sanctuary. Remember thy offerings. Grant, grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation. David says that in the first five more verses, that no matter what you are in, whether you're in East St. Louis, whether you're in Cahokia, whether you're in North St. Louis, or Baltimore, Chicago, he says you can pray these first five verses and they will always work. Okay, let me do a test because y'all are looking at me funny. Here it is. Don't worry about don't worry about nothing else. Listen to this. How many of you all have ever been in a situation, didn't know the words to say, and you just said help? Thank you. Okay. I got a couple of witnesses. Let's keep diving a little bit deeper. When you ask for help, did he not provide that help? Okay, now I got a more witnesses. Let's get a child of witnesses. When he provided that help, what did you say after he provided that help? You told him, thank you, then you didn't speak. You got like, why? Because you didn't have the words to say, 
but you knew what to say when times got up. Can I tell you, all you were saying well, what was in the Word. He said, look at the text again. He said, look at verse 2. Send the help not just from, okay, when you borrow money from family, two things. Pay them back. That's the first thing. Let's get that out the way. You owe somebody here right now. Give them a deposit. $20. Cash out. Say, look, I ain't got your whole 50, but here goes 10. Hey, that'll go a long way. You act like you don't owe me no money. But you done bought you a new toy merch bag. I don't know how they do that. You going on vacation, but you owe me 50. And isn't it strange, sidebar, isn't it strange when people owe you money and you ask for your money, they act like you get no day number? I mean, you came to me. Why are you tripping over that little 50, 50 dollars? Oh, now it's little. Let me do my hand the same way you do in your head. What am I 50? I mean, you ain't broke, are you? Uh, I wasn't. <laughs> All right, back on the sermon, y'all. Y'all cut up too much in church. Guess look at each other. Y'all cut up too much. Y'all laugh too much. Gotta be serious in church. <laughs> that that first of all, pay family back. That's number one. But but he says, send help from thy sanctuary. When y'all thought I lost my point, I didn't. I'm always on point because the Holy Ghost in me. Here it is. Is that when you borrow money from them, they'll think they're your source. Now there's a flip side that Pastor teach you. I don't want to hear this pride either. I don't need nobody. I don't like borrowing from people because they always no. You don't like borrowing from people for two reasons. You don't pay them back, and thank you. That's why you don't like borrowing. From people. It ain't because you don't need nobody. Because you have to borrow from the bank to get that car and that house. And you got a credit card, so you borrow from MasterCard every month. I'm doing some good preaching. That they'll think they are sore. But David tells us in this template, no, 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 Lord, send help from your sanctuary. That means that where however he brings it, he's going to bring it. So that may mean I may have to come to you and say, listen, I know you don't like borrowing people, but I, I really need some help. What you need some help for? Well, so and so happened, da 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 da, but I promise I'll pay you back Friday. Let me help somebody else out. If you tell me you're going to pay me back Friday, I shouldn't have to call you Friday. <laughs> and don't play like you forgot. Oh, you want to get back today? My mom was so funny. She's hilarious. I borrowed some money from her. She had just got on cash. I was early on cash. I just first started out. And I said, I need $100 until Thursday uh, just because I thought my check was going to come and didn't come. And uh, I had preached with somebody, and they said, well, don't cash the check till two days later. I said, oh, Jesus. Sorry. I said, God will take care of it. Anyway, so I said, Mom, I need $100. And so in cash app, there's a field where you can put what it's for. My mom petty, y'all. Pray for her. <laughs> she loaned me that hundred. And, 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 and watch this. She put in the field, loan. <laughs> in all caps. She wanted to be very clear. She was not giving me this money. She was loaning this money. On Thursday, I promise you, I did what I'm telling you not to do. I played dumb all Thursday. I knew I owed her money, but I didn't want to give it back because she's my mama. She don't care. <laughs> the devil is alive. She said, hey, baby. I said, hey, how you doing? She said, where the money I gave you? I said, that's how we're going to start off. She said, yeah, because when you called me, you said hi, and you got right to business. So I'm going to say hi, and you're right to business. <laughs> Can 
gave her a hundred back. Now why am I mad for giving her something back that I said I was going to give her? He says, Lord, send your help. I need it from you. But I got to get out of my pride. And if I've made some good relationships, I should be able to go to a brother or sister, not all the time, because I'm going to ask you, okay, where are you working if you always got to borrow some money? Where are you working at? You may need to get a third job. He says, send help. We need you, Lord. I want you to write this down. That I want you to offer God praise in your prayers. I want you to stop just praying, give me, give me, give me, give me. But I want you to start praying, Lord, I expose you. Lord, I magnify you. God, you've been so kind to me. Lord, thank you for touching me again. Lord, thank you for waking me up. I need you to start praising in your prayers as opposed to always asking in your prayers. I didn't say you could not. But oftentimes, just go and say, God, I say, oh, here you go again. God, I didn't come to ask for nothing. I just came to tell you how good you are. I came to remind you of how I had to remind her about how good you've been to me. In spite of me, you kept me from danger seen and unseen. You kept my body. You healed my children. You healed my mind. Thanks, God, all right. See, when you praise in your prayers, your focus will change because you'll begin to realize that it ain't all about you. I've met some self-centered Christians in my life. Self-centered. All they do is think about themselves. If it ain't about them, that clock's wrong too, by the way. I'm looking at my wife. If it ain't about them, see, it's just, it's just off. I'm looking at my phone. I'm sorry. If it ain't about them, it ain't about nothing. That it got to be about them. That's why they'll leave for six months. Want you to come be happy to see them. And then when they don't get the expression that they want, they say, y'all didn't change. No, we're pretty much the same. If anybody change, because we ain't seen you. I still been here giving praise. I still been here lifting him up. I still been here telling him thank you. The only person that changes, but 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 David says, put some praise in your prayer. I gotta go now. I know now. I know because we gave him praise in verse five, one through five. Now I know that I, the Lord, saveth his anointed. They're praying that God will save the king, and if God saves the king. He'll save the people. So they're praying, God, bless the pastor. Not because he's the reason, but because if you bless him, I know if you bless him, he's praying for us. So I know you're going to save the anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven when the saving strength of his right hand. He said, they say that I want you to put some praise in your prayer. But here's also awesome one. I want you to be a confident Christian. No, y'all missed it. I want you to be confident in God. The saints say that we're sending David out to war. And his foot soldiers are coming with him. You got a good job. You you do good with money. But oftentimes, budget and money can knock you off. Life can just happen. They say, verse 7, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember, here it is, the name of the Lord our God. Are they remembering the name of the Lord? Because the name of the Lord is a strong power. And the righteous, any righteous folks in here, and the righteous run in, and they are, I need you to be confident this year that your money, your intellect, your prestige, your connections, your last name ain't worth nothing without God. You can have all the money in the world and still die. Ask Stephen Jobs. You can have all the money in the world and be divorced eight times. Ask Donald Trump. You can have all the money in the world and still go to hell. Ask Adolf Hitler. Your money, your name, your prestige don't mean nothing. That's why the saints need to pray. 
praying. We don't trust in horses. We don't trust in chariots. I don't trust in the government. I don't trust my state job. I trust in the name of anybody with me today. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. I trust God. They ain't looking at your body because they trust it in their job. But look at them again and say, I trust God. Some of y'all out because some of y'all don't think y'all can't do nothing until tax season comes around. But I'm getting ready to bless you. You ain't got to wait for no refund. You ain't got to wait for your taxes to come in. God, get ready to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you ain't got room enough to receive. I want you to scream at your neighbor and say, just trust them, baby. Just trust them. The problem is that we found ourselves trusting in everything. But I like the old song, Blessing assurance that Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm going to have of salvation. Can I tell you that the blessed assurance is two words that are going to bless you and I got to get out your way. I don't preach long enough that it's blessed to be assured. It means that you are empowered to prosper when you are assured that God is going to do everything that you need. That's why they said they are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. The psalmist says that, that even our enemies that look like they were winning, they fall down, but God, you lifted us up. Can I ask you a question that how many times have you looked like you weren't going to make it? And everybody start telling people that, that God you trusted wasn't going to come through. But I need a testimony from somebody to say, he always comes through. Y'all got the wrong church. I need to go somewhere else. But look at somebody and say, he always comes through. I said, help me preach and look at your neighbor and say, he always comes through. He's never been late. He's never failed me. But he's always came through. And so that's why I can see it is a blessing assurance. I'm assured that he's going to come through. I'm assured that he's going to fight the battle. I'm assured that he's going to heal my body. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is why I sing. I got a blessed assurance. This is why I praise. I got a blessed assurance. This is why I dance. I got a blessed assurance. Trust 
21 after the battle. Because I told you that Psalms 20, that's it, Mike, that Psalms 20 and 21 are twins. Did I not tell you that? It's on camera. Go check the receipt. I said that, didn't I? Well, Minister Cornell, Sister Javetta, y'all got to help me because I was born in a small Poland town. So I don't know, like some of you big city folk, help me out with this, uh, 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 mother, is that twins come out the same time. No, no. no, they come out separate but the same, you know, not weeks and weeks. Maybe y'all come from a small border town too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Where they just help them out because you got twins. They looking at me funny. Uh, twins came out about a minute, couple of minutes apart. Four, four, four minutes. Here it is. Okay. They didn't write Psalms 21 after the battle. The same time they was writing Psalms 20. They was already writing the victory speech. Y'all missed it. Some of y'all waiting for God to do it. But I want you to write your story with a praise right now. Don't wait till the battle's over like I want to dance. But shout! Shout! I feel like dancing now because my breakthrough is getting ready to happen to
saints.
our first meeting of the baptism. He has made an open profession of faith in the Lord Jesus, and now he's going in the water to be buried with the Lord, but to be also take, brought up with him. Now, here's what I told him. I need the church to remember this. Who's ever singing? Let me tell you. Wait, wait a second, woman of God. Wait a second. That I need you all to help them that this is the first journey. This is the first step to their new journey. Can y'all help them? Amen. Amen. Live a life that's new to the